This is the CBC Evening News. Good evening, I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, Team Barbados has secured yet another gold at the prestigious Chelsea Flower Show in London. The winning piece by the Barbados Horticultural Society is themed Where Rum Comes From. Fellow CARICOM State Grenada also won gold. The Chelsea Flower Show runs until Saturday. A 26-year-old man is in serious condition at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital after falling from a truck during a DLP motorcade yesterday afternoon. Omari Jabari Baino of Glebeland St. George was a passenger on a truck during a motorcade hosted by the DLP candidate for St. George South, Dr. Esther Bayasuku. The truck was driven by 57-year-old Ken Ford of Ellerton in the same parish. Now, according to police, Bino was reportedly sitting on the railing on the right side of the truck when the motorcade was on its return route to the constituency office, traveling along Farm Road to Ellerton. As the truck was going around a corner, Bino lost his balance and fell onto the road, hitting his head. The driver stopped the truck and Dr. Bayasuku, who was traveling a short distance behind, rendered first aid to him. He was transported to the QEH by ambulance. He's reportedly in a deep, unconscious state with traumatic brain injury. Police say they will continue to monitor his medical condition as investigations continue. A charge that the local church is not speaking out on major election issues like same-sex marriage. The criticism is coming from Minister of Finance and DLP candidate for St. Michael Northwest, Chris Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair is worried that the church has remained silent about a Barbados Labour Party pledge to hold a referendum on same-sex marriage. It is probably the first time in the history of elections, not only in Barbados but across the world, where you can't hear the church. Where are the church leaders tonight? Who preach in the pulpit? Every Sunday about corruption and about corrupting influences and after we spoke on Sunday a week ago, you can't hear nothing out of the church. Mr. Sinclair says as Barbadians prepare to go to the polls on Thursday, there are a number of critical questions that remain unanswered on deep serious issues that could potentially affect the island's stability. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Frandall Stewart has been speaking about the success of the constituency councils. He says even though they have benefited the island, the Barbados Labour Party has insisted it will abolish them. While we were conceptualizing constituency councils in that context, members of the Barbados Labour Party were saying there's a waste of money and that they were going to repeal the legislation as soon as they come to office. We have seen how the constituency councils have functioned, and they are an asset to Barbados. They're the first attempt at local government since the Local Government Act was repealed around 1967. Currently celebrating his 15th anniversary as representative for St. Michael South Central, Richard Seeley has listed his accomplishments which include getting jobs for our constituents and infrastructural upgrades. The lighting on the Valerie pasture has improved. We've been able to get some of the roads dealt with. Scott's Gap, a concrete road through there, where people know when they're going to church, don't have to walk with their heel shoes in a plastic bag. We have been able, of course, to, thanks to the Barbados Water Authority Mains Relaying Program, the pressure of the water, there was a time when in order to have a shower in Britain Sill, you had to bathe at half past four in the morning because the pressure would drop right down during peak usage. That is no longer the case. Mr. Seeley also told supporters attempts to buy votes in the upcoming election should be rejected. Sean Farrell, CBC News. With just days to go before Thursday's general election, the Barbados Labour Party's leadership is concerned about the voters list. Mia Motley raised the issue at the party's rally last evening. We have more in this report from Kareem Smith. 
the Electoral and Boundaries Commission's failure to release the final electronic list of eligible voters with elections less than three days away has Barbados Labour Party leader Mia Motley upset. After the BLP's Large Whit Monday splash rally, which ended at Silver Sands Christ Church, Ms. Motley claimed it was another attempt to frustrate the party's campaign. But if we don't have the electronic copy, it means that you can't do that in under a full 10, 12 hours. And we understand their attempts to frustrate us. But as God is my witness, things that used to work regularly in this country and properly, from the courts to the police force to the central bank to the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, this government has literally tarnished every institution in this country. And I say to you tonight, the time has come for us to reclaim our country. Meanwhile, BLP candidate for St. Peter, Colin Jordan, has described a breakdown of trust between Barbadians and the DLP as government's biggest downfall. You have it in your hands. You will have it in your hands when you have your ballot and your pencil. Make the most of your choice, ladies and gentlemen. Vote to uplift Barbados again. Vote to restore this once fine country to the gem of the Caribbean that it used to be. Vote to return this country to the position where people can say to all of us, you are punching above your weight. Barbados must be rescued. St. James South candidate Sandra Husbands is assuring Barbadians a rescue mission is in place for the restoration of the island. Every single Barbadian, we the Barbados Labour Party invite you to come out and cast your vote and cast that vote for the Barbados Labour Party for in doing so, you have cast a vote for your children's future. You've cast a vote for your grandchildren's future. You've cast a vote for your business. You've cast a vote for the security of your home. You've cast a vote for health care. You have cast a vote for prosperity, peace, and security under the Barbados Labour Party with Mia Motley at its head. As the curtain came down on the BLP's rally, candidates are urging Barbadians to remain committed as elections draw nearer. Kareem Smith, CBC News. The leader of the United Progressive Party, Lynette Eastman, says her candidates are genuinely interested in community empowerment. Speaking at a spot meeting in Dunlow Lane last night, Ms. Eastman said her party's main aim is to uplift the Barbadian public and having people who worked in the community before gives them an advantage. Most of our members have worked in the community and now have seen politics as a means by which they can enhance the work that they wish to do. So it isn't that we have politicians who are now seeking to work in the community we have community workers who, because of the state of politics, have decided that they want to make a contribution to the communities in which they live. And the fact that Solutions Barbados candidates are new to the political scene is not a disadvantage. The party's candidate for St. Michael's South, Paul Gibson, stressed the point while speaking last evening during a meeting in St. Elizabeth Village, St. Joseph. He says, as successful business people, they have the right kind of experience to take Barbados forward. We are 28 new candidates, but successful business people that know how to run business and know what we're doing. And that's the disparity. That's the difference. We are the people that you should be voting for. We expect results. We measure. We expect. We execute properly. And this is where our strength is. And this is exactly what Barbados needs to take us out of this situation. With the construction of the Hyatt stall, the Democratic Labour Party candidate for the city of Bridgetown, Henderson Williams, wants to know why one of the parties involved in the court case is stopping city residents from accessing jobs. He says the action goes against claims to have the interest of Bridgetown residents at heart. Mr. Williams was also critical of a recent announcement by the Barbados Labour Party 
that no Hyatt will be constructed in the historic city. Masons won't work, tailors won't work, carpenters won't work, painters won't work. And then when the hotel then, you're looking at about 700 or 750 jobs for people, and you're going to block it. And then you're going to turn around and say that you care about people, that you care about development in Barbados, and you're looking to the long term. Give me a break. If tourism is to continue to be a major foreign exchange earner, there needs to be measures to secure that sector's financial stability. The Barbados Labour Party's candidate for St. Philip's South, Indar Weir, pointed to some of his party's plans to improve the foreign reserves should they be elected to government. If you, in Christchurch, which is a huge part of our tourism belt, understand the importance of us bringing our foreign currency cover because tourism is our number one foreign currency earner, then you understand that we have thought this thing through. And that the introduction of a room night tax on hotel accommodation will bring millions of dollars in direct foreign currency earning straight back into our reserves. Solutions Barbados candidate for St. Michael Northeast, Kimar Stewart, has dismissed the Barbados Labour Party's plans to remove road tax and introduce a fuel tax. Speaking at Weston in support of St. James North candidate David Walren, he says the money made from road tax is needed. It could go towards financing debt, it could go towards infrastructural development, it could go towards investment programs. So the tax at the pump will see pressure towards the taxi men, will see pressure towards the bus service, in which the government of Barbados provides a substantial amount of via the transport board. Well, they're already claiming that it's a pressure to run the transport board. So why would they tax you at the pump? It needs to be clarified so the public can understand. Well, the, for the economy of Barbados to improve, there needs to be a greater injection of money, and that can be achieved if more people are employed. This suggestion from United Progressive Party candidate for Christchurch West Central, Rhea Riley. She believes it can also help in repl replenishing the depleted national insurance scheme. Right now we have the highest unemployment rate is at 30% currently. If we had all of these people working, from what I understand is about 16,600 people currently unemployed based on the last census on the Barbara Statistical website, if we had every single person working that is currently unemployed, even if they were just making minimum wage, that is $4.5 million we could have been putting back into the NIS. And the Barbados Labour Party sees Thursday's general election not as a vote for power, but a vote for the empowerment of the country. And with the empowerment of people at the centre of the party's mandate, the party's candidate for St. Philip West, John King, is looking to the youth to take up the mantle in moving the country forward. It's going to take the ideas and the energy of our young people to take us to new heights. I want to encourage every last one of you to go after your dreams because in going after your dreams, your country will benefit from your dreams. DLP candidate Rodney Grant says the giveaways proposed by the Barbados Labour Party promotes mendicancy and will take the island backwards. He says the BLP has not brought any solid plan to support the giveaways. Mr. Grant was among the speakers at a joint St. Michael South and St. Michael South Central meeting at Villa Road in Britain's Hill, and that was in support of Prime Minister Frendel Stewart and Richard Seeley. This mendicant behavior that inspires our people to want less, to want just a long neck or a plate of food, a hundred dollar bill, does not stand well with the future Barbados that we require. He also does not sit well with what it means to be a Barbadian. We as Barbadians are far more proud, far more self-determined. Solutions Barbados has placed agriculture high on the agenda to move Barbados forward. 
Also speaking in Weston, candidate for St. Lucie, Reverend John Carter, said special incentives will be given to farmers. We are going to encourage the farmers who have come out of production. We are going to encourage the farmers who are thinking about going into farming but have abandoned the idea. We are going to encourage every household in Barbados to plant food. And as a, one of our incentives to that effect is that every householder who plants a fruit bearing tree or plants any food crop, we are going to give them a deduction on their land taxes. With a rise in crime, violence and negative behaviour on the island, there's the thought that any change in these social ills must start within the community, particularly at the family level. UPP candidate for St. Philip North, Nigel Newton, is assuring his party is committed to reviving and empowering the island's communities. We, as constituents, and we indeed must resolutely defend the sanctity and integrity of our family and communities. The United Progressive Party is concerned about the breakdown of our families and our communities. We are also troubled by the criminal activity destroying all that we value as a people. The United Com uh, Progressive Party is committed to reviving and empowering our communities. The leadership qualities of the leader of the Barbados Labour Party have been called into question by the Democratic Labour Party's candidate for Christchurch West, Verla de Pisa. Now she says the now BLP leader has failed during her tenure as Minister of Education and Attorney General and doesn't possess the leadership qualities. Mr. Pisa is of the view that some people believe Mia Motley, who aspires to be a leader, is beyond scrutiny. Whenever anyone thinks that they are above criticism, you have to ask yourself, why are they not to be scrutinized? If you, as Minister of Education, cannot rest your finger down on a single positive that you have left for the country, whilst you were Minister of Education, why am I to consider you for Prime Minister? We'll take a break here, but come back with more news, so stay with us. Plans are already underway for the 2019 edition of the Barbados Manufacturers Exhibition, or BMEX. This as the curtain came down on what's being described as another successful showing. Lorna Jones tells us more. From dog kennels to beauty products to home improvement and renewable energy, this year's edition of the Barbados Manufacturers Exhibition, or BMEX, had something for everyone. One of the popular areas was the food court, where patrons had delicious and healthy options, like veggie choices and its range of veggie burgers. One is a chickpea flavor, uh, a lentil flavor, and uh, our interesting beet flavor. This beet flavor has been, uh, uh, you know, quite a stir here at BMX uh, since not a lot of people ever really heard about, you know, beet uh, burger. Whenever, you know, uh, they come to our booth, for example, you know, they are actually reluctant, you know, to sample our beet. But upon really getting a taste of it, they are, st they are ecstatic because, um, I mean, everybody's asking, how could you get beet to taste this excellent? Those with a sweet tooth were not left out. One of the exhibitors offering sweet treats was Gems Chocolates, a business that was born after owner and self-taught chocolatier Melissa Batson lost her job a few years ago. Everything you see is I taught myself. I didn't go to any schools, I don't have any certificates, but I, I found a way to, to have it done and then I just created all the bars and treats and uh, we also do edible fruit arrangements. Um, so that's how I got into it. So it took losing a job to create another one. The Barbados Manufacturers Association's president, 
Robert Noel says he is quite happy with how this year's BMAX was received. He encouraged entrepreneurs to see BMAX as an outlet for valuable exposure. We have, I would have to say, world-class stuff here. It's just, as I said, a, a platform to, to show it. Because, it, you know, it takes a, a, quite a few dollars to put off or on a show. But having to come together as a unified group at BMAX, it gives you that power, that, 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 that movement, that access to people that can, can see what you have. Mr. Noel says the plans for the 2019 edition of the Expo are already in the works. Lorna Jones, CBC News. The third round of voting to try and elect an Anglican bishop takes place on June 7th. Confirmation of this from Diocesan Administrator Canon Wayne Isaac after a decision on the matter was taken earlier today. The two remaining candidates are Reverend John Rogers and Dean Jeffrey Gibson. The elective synod will determine which man will hold the top post. The synod comprises the House of Clergy, made up of all priests from the 44 Anglican churches, as well as the House of Laity, which comprises lay people in the church. And neither Reverend Rogers nor Dean Gibson has so far gained the two-thirds majority in both houses, which is required by law to be declared head of the church. Canon Isaacs says the elective synod has until the end of August to choose a bishop. When a candidate is finally elected, he still has to be confirmed by the bishops of the province. After that comes consecration and enthronement of the new bishop. Barbadian pastry chef Leander McConney recently returned home after copping third prize in the SoFlo Cake and Candy Explo in Florida. The 29-year-old, who also holds a bachelor's degree in chemistry, traveled to the Sunshine State for the International Cake Show and Competition and placed third in a semi-professional sculpted cake category. The theme she had to work with was wildlife of Florida. I chose the Florida Panther because I like big cats, because I have a fascination with leopards. And the Florida Panthers are almost extinct, actually. Because when you go, you're not going to see them anywhere. Like, you know, when you go on the, um, you go on the little crocodile tours through the swamps and um, the Everglades, mm -hmm. you will see alligators, turtles, everything. But you're not going to see the Florida Panther because it's almost that same. Mm -hmm. So I said, I guess I'll bring awareness to the fact that there is still a Florida Panther. Y'all should know about it. Ms. McConney's business, Lovely Cakes, started with just cupcakes before she traveled to Canada to take a course in cake design. She says the four-year-old company is about to take off. So I would be expanding my business, so I'll be moving into a store, yeah, storefront, so that we can also create, do slices of cakes or cookies and that kind of stuff. And I'll probably stick in the um, competitions. I really like it. <laughs> like, I think it's really fascinating, the stuff that you could create. Mm -hmm. And just especially seeing the professional which will do after yeah. the semi-professional, I think I need to go up in the ranks. Okay, okay. I have a good passion for that. The Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association is optimistic there will be no fall-off in bookings for the summer season, despite a challenging environment. CEO Rudy Grant says they're hoping to be on par with last year, in spite of the negative publicity associated with the South Coast sewage problem, and the United Kingdom dealing with issues associated with Brexit. He adds that what seems to have changed, however, is the booking pattern of tourists. One of the things I do have to tell you is that the booking window is now a lot shorter. And what our accommodation members have been reporting is that um, you could have uh, a forward um, projections that you know, say one thing. But at the end of the month, you do see um, something different. And, and that is attributed to the fact that the booking window is a lot shorter and persons are now actually booking um, within days and traveling within days. So that um, we are uh, somewhat optimistic that we will maintain our performance uh, at the same level um, as we did last year at the very minimum. Regarding the sewage problem in particular, Mr. Grant says the relevant state agencies have been ensuring any fallout is minimized. Well, after the break, we'll check in with some of our regional neighbors.
Britain, Jamaica's Child Protective Services were called in to intervene after it was reported that a four-year-old boy was repeatedly left alone for days by his parents. We have this report from TVJ. He is only four years old, happy to be let out of this room where neighbors say he spends most nights alone with no food or parental protection. They describe it as a heart-rending situation they are tired of witnessing. They say this apparent neglect has been happening for three years, the child's mother leaving him locked inside for several days. It's understood the child has had a disorder from birth. He has Down syndrome, he can't do anything at all for himself, and he's been left alone at this premises over and over and over. Now, he's here for two days all by himself. He doesn't even eat. That's as bad as it is. When he gets hungry, community members give him meals. On Thursday, they call the police. This is not the first time help has been sought from the authorities. CBA came here already. What I was told to take him on, the mother come and so, the grandmother of the child came over and support and say, oh, they're not to take him and blah, 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 whatever. And they go away and leave him. Police came here about a month ago. Resident called police again to take him. When the police came, they said they cannot take him because they have nowhere to put him. They are to call CDA. We've been calling CDA since then, unsuccessful. On Thursday, the police took the boy. Neither his parents or relatives were present at the time. In the meantime, community members expressed relief that he will now be given some care. Very good. Very good. That's what the very good. Me glad, very good. Very good. Very glad. Go on with him, officer. This Here is this been going on, officer. This is the infant alone. Night upon night, hungry. I kill him. Take him now. Over to Guyana now, a male teacher at a secondary school in the capital, Georgetown, is under investigation after allegations he sent inappropriate text messages to a female student. We have a report from Channel 2 Headline News. The teacher, who is in his early 20s, had only started working at the school during this past school term. While the incident happened about a week ago, headline news was in receipt of the text in question. The teacher allegedly told the student, I like you because you're sweet and naughty, because I want you to send me a nice picture. I already told you why, and show me something I'll show you. The student was uncomfortable with the conversation with the teacher as she told her friends and other teachers at the school along with family members. Quote, so it was lunchtime and he came into my class. I stand up on the chair. He said, is that your number? He called it out. I said, yes. He said, I'll call you. I said, text is fine. Further in the messages, the girl also noted, then he kept watching me weird and stuff, asking me, I'm going to text him. Then Friday came, he started texting me like that. End quote. Headline news made contact with the teacher in question. When he was confronted about the messages, he repeatedly asserted that he didn't do it. Are these your messages? Look, it's right here. Because you are sweet and naughty, because I am naughty, are you sending sexual messages to no, students? No, it wasn't me. Who was it? It was one of my cousins. Is this thing really? Nonetheless, the Ministry of Education has launched an investigation. Sports news is coming up next, but before we get there, here is a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. When addressing a person who is blind, it is helpful to call them by name or touch them gently on the arm. This tip is brought to you in association with the Barbados Council for the Disabled.